up guys welcome back to the channel now in this video we're picking up right where we left off with the rooftop tent trying to get this series finished up now if you missed my last upload where we built this hatch ladder for the third gen definitely go check that out i think it turned out really nice now if you're looking for an easy way to do this portion of the build don't do anything i'm about to do in this video just get some sort of bed liner coating herculiner raptor liner paint it be done with it it's probably what i should have done but if you want to see me learn from my mistakes keep watching i make plenty of them in this video but I still think it came out really nice. So let's get into the shop. We got a lot of work to do before we can get this thing painted. As you can see, there's quite a bit of unevenness in the surface. And if we just paint right on top of that, it's gonna look really bad. I want to have a really nice, almost automotive finish once we get done with this thing. We're not gonna be sanding through the fiberglass, obviously. That's why we put several coats of epoxy on top of our fiberglass. So we're just gonna knock down the highs in that epoxy, smooth it all out, and then we'll go from there. So we're about to do a bunch of sanding. While you watch me sand this thing down, I do want to remind you guys, especially those that might be new here, that I have a Facebook group called DIY Rooftop Tent Community. We have a little over 21,000 members in there. Lots of really awesome ideas in there. Lots of super helpful people. So feel free to join us over there. Also be sure to like on this video and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It really helps the channel out. All right, after hours of sanding, this wouldn't have been nearly as bad if I hadn't royally screwed up on one of my coats of epoxy. So I had to spend a lot of time sanding to get this thing nice and smooth. Now I didn't sand through my fiberglass. If you see, I have a couple spots that look like this. I call this a warning track. This is where the sander has just barely skimmed over the surface of your fiberglass. And this is telling you, hey, you're getting a little too thin to top what you're doing. So once you see that, move on to a different area. You don't want to go any deeper across those surfaces. All right, now that we got this thing sanded down, there's quite a few places that we need to fix before we can move on to paint. If I was just to paint it as is, there would be tons of little defects that you'd be able to see right through the paint. As you can see, I have quite a few low spots. I have some holes that were air pockets underneath the fiberglass. I have little nicks and scratches that I need to fill. I can't sand down any further in this area because I've already I could see the weave of the fiberglass, and so this is telling me not to go any deeper. So what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna try something new that, that I've never done before. We're gonna mix up what's called a fairing compound. Then, now this is something that you can buy pre-mixed if you want to, but I've just bought the ingredients. We can mix it up ourselves, it's a lot cheaper. So this fairing compound is just a putty that we're gonna put on the surface. It's gonna fill those low spots, all those holes, and then we'll come back and sand that down and we'll have a really, really nice smooth finish. This is similar to Bondo and bodywork if you're, if you're familiar with that. Now to make this fairing compound, we're gonna be using two additives mixed with our two to one epoxy, the same epoxy that we've been using for this entire project. The first one is called glass microspheres or glass bubbles. And uh, basically what this stuff is, it's microscopic glass, hollow glass beads. Uh, this stuff is actually really, really cool. You should do some research on this. There's a few videos about uh, glass microspheres. This stuff's really neat. Apparently, a lot of things are made with this. You're probably sitting really close to something that's been made with glass microspheres. This stuff's really neat. So we'll mix this in with the epoxy. That'll create a paste that's gonna fill the surfaces, but it's not nearly as hard as the epoxy that we just got done sanding off. This stuff took forever to sand. It's extremely hard. This is gonna create a nice smooth surface, but it should sand off a lot easier. Now the second additive is called Cabasil. This is a thickener. So if we mix just the microspheres in with the epoxy, it creates a paste, but it's still a little runny. So if we were to apply it to a more vertical surface, it's gonna to tend to sag or run down, down the side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the Cabasil. It'll thicken it up to more of a peanut butter consistency so that when we put it on more of a vertical surface, it's gonna stay in place. It's not gonna sag or run or anything. But yeah, I could talk about this stuff for days. I don't wanna nerd out on this stuff too much. Uh, let's grab the epoxy and get this stuff mixed up. One word of caution. Uh, this stuff is really bad to breathe. I'm not even gonna open the lids of these containers without wearing a respirator. 
don't want to breathe this stuff in. It's very lightweight. Once you open the container, it kind of seems to drift in, into the air pretty easily. So definitely wear a respirator when you mix this stuff up. All right, so the instructions for the glass microspheres calls for us to keep the resin and hardener separate while we mix the glass microspheres with each one. So we'll mix everything separately, get those mixed up, and then pour one batch into the next batch. You also want there to be a one-to-one -one mixture for the resin and then for the hardener. So for example, uh, we have a two-to-one epoxy. So we'll say we do eight ounces of resin to four ounces of hardener. When you go to mix your microspheres, you want to go from eight to 16 ounces and then on the hardener, you'll go from four to eight. We'll get all that mixed up and then we can add a little bit of Cavacil to the thickness that we, that we want. So yeah, hope that all makes sense. I'm probably actually gonna do a smaller batch than that. I'll probably end up doing like four ounces of resin with two ounces of hardener before mixing our uh, glass microspheres. So let's get this mixed up and uh, try it out. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get this mixed up in the resin. And this is just me showing you the one-to-one -one ratio there. Then I'm gonna add it to the hardener as well and get that all mixed up. This stuff is really, really runny before you put the cabocil in there. Once you have that mixed up really well, you're gonna add the resin and the hardener together and get that mixed up really, really well. Once you have that mixed up, it'll be time for the cabocil. This is kind of like when you add wood flour to epoxy. Just kind of add as much as you need until you get to this peanut butter consistency. Once you have it all mixed up, we're just basically going to paste it on, work around the surface, fill in as many low spots as we can. All right guys, that went really, really smoothly. I cannot believe how far that small amount went. I only mixed up four ounces of resin with two ounces of hardener and then added the microspheres. And that covered pretty much everything I needed to patch uh, this round. So super excited. If I had done that before, I might've just skim coated this entire thing and then blocked it out and just had a really nice surface. But really happy with the, the way this turned out. All right, so I've let the fairing compound sit for about a week. I just hadn't been able to work on it. I did check on it about 24 hours later and it was still a little bit soft. I could still get a you know a thumbnail mark in it, but after a week, it's hardened fully. It's rock solid. So I'm gonna get this thing outside, start sanding it down. This should be a lot easier to sand down than just pure epoxy. That's why I use this in the first place. So let's get it sanded and see how it does. All right, got this thing sanded down. It probably looks exactly the same to you guys, but it's all nice and smooth. Everything's blended in. What you see is just the leftover fairing compound that's filled all of my low spots. I do have a few small spots that I missed and a couple pinholes that need to be filled, but I might just use Bondo for just really small repairs. Uh, this, was, this worked really good for just mass areas that needed to be flattened out, but you can definitely use Bondo for some small things. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing on the base, get the fairing compound on the base, sand that down. I'm not gonna go crazy because you can't see most of the base anyway, just on the sides and around the edge some. And then we'll be ready to start painting this thing. All right guys, we have the fairing compound all sanded down. The surface is really smooth. I did really like it. It worked really great for large areas. And it did take a few days to you know, fully cure up, but it sanded really quickly. It did work really well. Happy with that. Now I'm gonna move over to some all-purpose Bondo to fix just some small areas that I missed with the fairing compound. Uh, I have a couple of spots that are little air bubbles and places that I need to fix. This stuff is really good for small, quick repairs. 
Uh, you could use this for larger repairs, but you have such a short working time with this stuff. I've been working on the base of the hard shell and I'm only getting like 30 to 45 seconds of use before the stuff hardens up to the point where I can't use it any longer. So I'm only mixing up like little golf ball size amounts. Any more than that, I'm having trouble getting it on the surface quickly enough. Now before we get our Bondo mixed up, I'm gonna show you that. You just wanna make sure your surface is really clean and what I like to do is take little bits of uh, painter's tape and anywhere you have a little imperfection that needs to be fixed, I like to stick a piece of tape there. That way you can easily see what needs to be fixed. It's really easy to, uh, to miss a spot. So yeah, I'm gonna go around this thing, mark all my spots, and then we'll get some Bondo mixed up. All right, now this is what I got from Lowe's. It's the all-purpose putty. It comes with this small cream hardener. I like to get the larger size because this is just never enough. And then I have a little squeegee to mix everything up and apply it to our surface. And then this is my little mixing board. It's just a piece of plywood. I have like three or four uh, layers of foil on here. And that way, once I'm done with a, a layer, I can just peel it off and keep going. Uh, you just don't want to use a porous material like just raw wood or a piece of cardboard or something like that. It's just not going to work out. This works really well. You can also use wax paper. Uh, so yeah, this is really not hard to do. Uh, you can't really mess anything up. This all sands off pretty easily. Um, if you've never used this before, just get ready to waste some of it. Uh, you're going to not apply it quickly enough, I can guarantee you. But just start with really small amounts and uh, apply it really as fast as you can. That's, the, that's why I put these marks here is to, so I can fix everything as quickly as possible and keep moving. Um, if you're searching around for your imperfections that you missed, it's hard to do, but the tape method works really well. You can quickly see where you need to go next. So let's get this mixed up. All right, now for mixing up the Bondo, I like to just start with a real small amount. Like that. And then I like to spread it out just in a circle, a flat disc, maybe a quarter inch thick or so. One thing you want to do is just knead your hardener. Make sure that that's all mixed up just a few times like that. Now the formula that I like to use for mixing up Bondo is no matter what size circle you have, just start in the center and then go outward. Just do the radius. It's probably a little bit too much, a little thick of a line. Some people like to do just a line right across, but it's plenty just going from the center outward. And then to mix that up, I just like to grab it kind of lap it on top of itself just like that until I get a uniform color. I don't like I don't like to stir or anything like that. Just kind of lap it on top of itself to keep from uh, getting air bubbles in it. And then eventually the gray streaks will go away and it'll be all a red color. Now the can says to mix for about two minutes. Uh, for me, it's 83 degrees in here. Uh, you don't have that much time. I only mix this really quickly and, and now I'm done. Now I'm gonna get it on the, on the surface. All right, our Bondo is all hardened up. I can hardly get a thumbnail mark in it. Let's get this all sanded off. I'm really hoping to get this thing primed today, but I am so sick of sanding. I just want to be done. So let's get to it. All right, guys, I am done sanding. I'm kind of over it at this point. You can see the filler that's left behind filling in on my low spots. When you're talking about painting, you know, 95% of this job is all prep work. It's the sanding, it's the filling, re-sanding. This last 5% is the actual painting itself, but it doesn't matter how nice of a paint that you use, if the prep work's not done, if it's not flat and smooth, it's gonna look really bad. So if you don't wanna deal with all the sanding and the paints and the primers and all that, just use like a bed liner coating or rubberized coating. Cut this thing up, it'll give you a durable surface. It's gonna look pretty good. But I'm gonna be painting this thing and I want it to come out as good as possible. So, so yeah, let me show you guys what we're gonna be using to paint this thing. All right guys, we are gonna be doing the Rust-Oleum paint job on this project. Now, if you've never heard of the Rust-Oleum paint job, go look it up. A bunch of people have used this. There's a bunch of videos on it. And I could personally vouch for it. I've done this several times with great results. 
Now we have we have our Rust-Oleum oil-based primer. I know it says clean metal primer, but don't worry, it's going to work just fine for this. And then we have our top coat, which is this protective enamel and gloss smoke gray, which I think is going to look really good. And then we have our acetone. That's what we're going to use to thin this out. Now you don't have to use a paint gun if you don't want to. I've seen people paint their cars with rollers with this exact same setup with great results. But if you want to step up your game, this is a Eastwood Contours gun. I have had this for a long time. It works great, um, but it's a little pricey. What I would suggest you do is, if you want to try this out, is just to go use Harbor Freight's gun. Their $16 gun works extremely well for the price. I think it comes with a 1.4 tip. I have a 1.3 on my gun. What you'll want to add to it is you're going to want to add a little regulator. This is just a cheap regulator from Harbor Freight. And then I have an inline desiccant uh, filter to filter the air. Uh, so it's a really simple setup. Works really well. I'm going to be using this 1.3 nozzle for my paint and the primer for this. So. So yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to thin our primer and our top coat with acetone one to one mixing ratio or 50-50, however you want to look at it. The key to this paint job is to do a bunch of really, really thin coats. Uh, what this is going to do is help each coat to dry much faster. Old base paint dries really slowly, but thinned one to one and really thin coats, it should dry pretty quickly. And I'll keep you up and I'll update you. I'll let you know how long my coats are taking me to dry. It's a almost 90 degrees outside so i'll let you know about all that so yeah i'm gonna go ahead get my primer mixed up thin it out one to one and then get it in the spray gun and start start spraying all right time to get this paint mixed up i like to chuck up a paint stir and a drill all right i'm gonna start off with a small amount i'll probably only do about four ounces of paint with uh, four ounces of acetone to start with and see how far that goes. And if I need more, I can always mix up more. I'm gonna do about four ounces of acetone. You should expect it to just be very watery thin like that. Up on, let this drip in the cup. All right, I'm gonna start with the base. I'm gonna wheel it out there, have my little pop up tent because the trees drop stuff down. I was gonna do it inside in the shop here, but I was gonna have to put plastic all around and kind of make a temporary paint booth, but I don't wanna deal with that, so I'm gonna push this outside. All right, now setting up your paint gun is, is really quite easy. For this project, I'm gonna be running, my PSI is gonna be set at 30. I find that to be just right for this. I'm, I'm running the one three tip right here. Now you only have a couple of knobs that you can really change things with. You have this top one, this changes the fan pattern. So it goes from a real wide fan pattern down to a real narrow fan pattern. And then this back here changes the volume of paint that you're using. So you can have a really fine mist or you can change it to where you're putting out just a ton of paint. So the first half click is just air. So you can set your PSI down here, see that? And then press fully and that's going to give you paint like that. So you see we have a pretty narrow uh, pattern right there. What you want, you want to turn that more, you're going to much wider, probably eight to nine inches. See that? And there we go. And then if you want to put down more paint, you can turn that knob and that'll give you more or less paint. So yeah, not really much to it. Pretty simple. Here it goes.
All right, guys. Top and the bottom are back in the shop. First coat of primer is on. There's nothing like a good first coat of primer to show you where all your imperfections are and how poorly of a prep job you did. That's how paint goes, guys. It's just how it is. Look at that. That's just one spot. I can just go like this and you can see all those little imperfections that I'm gonna have to fix. Oh man. Ah, it's hard to see, hard to look at. I just wanna overlook it and be like, it's fine. But uh, I want this thing to look better than that. So I'm gonna do some more sanding. This is how this thing goes. Prep work's gotta be perfect. Really happy with the paint though. It's drying extremely quickly, so the priming and the painting should go really quickly once I have all the all my little imperfections worked out. I think the painting process will go really quickly. The drying time was the only thing I was worried about, and it's going really fast. Really happy with that. So yeah, gonna have to fix some stuff and uh, repaint. Not a big deal, it's just part of it. All right guys, it's the next day. We're in the shop in the dark. Like I said, when you put the first coat of paint on, that's when your imperfections really come out. And I know I'm being a little nitpicky and a little bit crazy with this light, but as you can see, with cast a shadow, you can really see those, those deep spots. They're all over the place. So yeah, I know I'm being a little bit crazy, but I want this thing to look really good. So I'm gonna touch up some of these deeper spots. I'm not gonna, you know, skim coat the whole thing or anything, but uh, I'm gonna fix some of these little deep, deeper low spots and then sand those down and then respray my primer. But, but yeah, just want it to look good. <laughs> like my dad always says never time to do it right always time to do it over I'm basically having to fix a bunch of my own little spots because I rushed through the sanding sanding down that fairing compound it left a bunch of little sanding marks and nicks and, and deep grooves and stuff uh, just just wanting to get through that as quickly as possible you can see right here I've sanded the paint off and this is you can see where the paint stays in the low spots so i'm just coming back sanding that all down drying it off and then we should be good for more paint but yeah don't rush through your sanding go slow take your time and you won't have to come back and redo so all right guys after a bunch of sanding this is what we got i've just finished wiping it down so we're ready to put on that second coat of primer so let's do it just finished the second and third coats of primer I basically done back to back maybe 15 20 minutes apart but this thing's starting to look really good really glad I put in the extra effort to get those sanding marks out this thing's looking a lot better than it was before really happy about that still a little streaky across the surface where it's a little bit thin but with subsequent coats of primer that'll even out so I'm not worried about that at all I'll probably do two to three more coats before the top coat and uh, hopefully tomorrow I can get that top coat going. Dad, I found a snail. You found a snail? Yeah. Show the, me. Look, my teeth. You see this one? Wow. A bit special. It's pretty. It is pretty. <laughs> when you put on your coats of primer, what you're gonna wanna do is put those coats on pretty quickly one after another, not letting it fully cure up. If you do let it sit and fully cure up, you're gonna to wanna to come back and scuff the surface. I'm using a Scotch-Brite pad. You can use like four or 500 grit sandpaper. You're just barely lightly going over the surface because what you'll find is if it's fully cured, when you touch it with your hand, it's actually gonna be really rough. And that's from the overspray settling on the surface and then drying. Um, so yeah, just lightly go over it, scuff the surface, it'll smooth it out, and then you'll be ready for your top coat. I just got done scuffing the surface, I'm gonna wipe it down really good, and then we're ready for top coat. All right guys, we are ready for our top coat. I'm using the smoke gray protective enamel, and just like the primer, 
one to one with acetone. Real simple, I'm gonna mix up 16 ounces of this and get it in the spray gun. Look at that. No mess at all. This is a little trick that I like to do to keep my spray gun cup from leaking. Super excited to finally be putting on the top coat. We're gonna do it the exact same way we did the primer. Starting off with super light coats, several just dust coats first, and then we'll lay it on heavier as we progress. All right, first coat is on. You can see I just lightly dusted it. You can see the white underneath. I'm about to put the second coat on while this one's still slightly tacky. All right, after a couple coats of the oil-based Rust-Oleum, I realized that the drying time was actually pretty slow. Um, I don't remember that from using it in, in the past, but I'm only getting about one coat of paint on per day. So I decided to try to speed that up by using some Catalyst Hardener from Magic. You can get this at Tractor Supply or online. And they recommend a 16 to one ratio between the paint and the hardener. I'm doing a one to one ratio, eight ounces of paint to eight ounces of uh, acetone. So I'm doing a half ounce of the catalyst with eight ounces of this. So half ounce is one tablespoon. So one tablespoon per cup. And I found that I was able to basically get two coats per day. So I'd do a coat in the morning, scuff the paint that evening and repaint which I thought was still pretty slow. But if you're able to move it out into the sun and let it bake, it dramatically sped up the drying times. I was able to dry the, the hard shell in about two and a half hours doing that. So, so yeah, if you're looking for a way to speed up the, the oil-based dry times, use some catalyst hardener, get that thing out in the sun and it'll really speed things up. I'm gonna scuff the surface since it's fully cured. I'll probably use some 500 grit sandpaper, go over it real lightly, and then uh, add additional coats. So yeah, let's get to it. Really like the color. All right guys, I've done five or six coats of our top coat and I think it's come out really awesome. This paint is so forgiving, it's so cheap, so forgiving. I did coats that were one to one. I did a coat that was two to one. I did one to one with the Catalyst Hardener. I baked it out in the sun for a while and all the coats turned out really, really good. I did scuff the paint with Scotch-Brite between each coat, but yeah, super cheap, super easy. I think it turned out really well. Go check it out. If you don't like the glossiness, one thing you can do is just take some uh, 1500 grit sandpaper, knock the glossiness off, and uh, it'll really keep any imperfections from, from standing out. The glossiness really will make any type of little imperfection pop out, but I think this looks pretty good. If I wanted to look better than it does now, I would have needed to do like a filler primer, block that out, and then paint, but that's a little bit more than I was wanting to get into, but I think it looks really good.
But yeah, I think that's where I'm gonna wrap up this video. I'm really happy with the way the paint turned out. And I kind of underestimated how much left I have to do before I can finish this project. So I think in the next video, we'll do all the final touches. We'll get everything put back together, get the roof tracks on, get it installed on the vehicle. Super excited for that. Y'all, I am no professional. I'm learning from my mistakes, as you can see. If you have any questions, comments, or uh, any tips on how to do this better, please leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to learn from you guys as well. But thanks for watching, and we'll see y'all in the next video.